Good morning, and welcome to another Cross Point Southern Baptist Church weekly Bible study. We're so happy that you just decided to join us. I'm your host, Jim Hillier, and uh, whether you're a first time visitor or a returning guest, I really, uh, uh, really appreciate your, your tuning in to these, uh, these Bible study sessions. Uh, you know, besides this Bible study, Cross Point also live streams our Sunday morning services every Sunday at 10.45 a.m., and we hope you'll join us for that as well. Uh, we are currently doing online uh, service format only, um, and uh, we're also doing you know, our Bible studies and uh, our online uh, through Zoom. We're doing a Wednesday night Bible study. So uh, we are planning on reevaluating that uh, situation uh, after uh, next week, January 17th, and uh, we hope to be uh, able to get back to actually getting together uh, in person in the church. Uh, but uh, we do hope that uh, after that, once we announce uh, that we're going to be going back to in person, uh, uh, both uh, our Sunday morning Bible study and our services, uh, that if you're in the Edwardsville, uh, Wood River, uh, Roxana area, that uh, uh, that you would decide to uh, to stop in and join us. We'd love to meet uh, some of the folks that uh, that that we've been reaching through uh, uh, both our Bible studies and our uh, our online services. And while we while we do plan on reopening uh, at some point as as uh, safety allows, we will be continuing to uh, to do our live streams we've been doing that for about four years now and uh, we'll also be continuing these uh, these online bible studies for those who may not uh, may not be able to, uh, to to make it to church on sunday morning you know you may uh, be health care workers or or somebody that uh, that, that uh, your job has you uh, has you otherwise occupied on sunday mornings uh, we hope you'll continue to tune in, listen, and I also encourage you to, to hit the like and subscribe buttons down there. Um, it helps us kind of keep track to know that uh, the, that people are uh, are following um, the services and uh, and the lessons, and uh, you know, it's kind of a kind of an encouragement. And uh, uh, also, as uh, as time goes by, um, kind of helps uh, get us uh, get our rankings up there. So, uh, and if you, uh, if you feel, uh, if you feel led, there's that little bell button down there that uh, you need to, you need to click on it. And then anytime new content either gets published or, uh, or goes live, you'll get a notification on your phone that, uh, uh, so you, uh, you know, that, that, that we're there. So this week we are, uh, looking at. Uh, we're in uh, uh, session six of our uh, 2021 series, uh, looking at the New Testament book of Luke. And we're going to be looking at Luke chapter three, verses seven through 18. Now, if you're, if you're at all interested in getting a hold of a copy of the material that we use uh, both here on our, uh, our online Bible study and in our uh, our in-person Sunday school classes, that is available uh, through a company called Lifeway. Uh, you can get it at www.lifeway.com slash explore the Bible, all one word. And uh, the material comes out in a, uh, in kind of a magazine format and it comes out every three months. And during that, uh, that quarterly period, it covers uh, a book uh, or sometimes uh, two books, if they're small, of uh, either the New Testament or Old Testament. And uh, it's, uh, it, it does that, that weekly deep dive into the scripture. One of the things that I really enjoy about this is, the, uh, is a Bible reading plan aid uh, that, that's in the front of it. And uh, while, uh, while the weeklies kind of skip through, uh, you know, you may be in uh, chapter three, uh, you know, eight or 10 verses this week, and you may be in chapter five next week. 
Well, what fills in between is the, the daily reading plan. And what this does, it gives you verse by verse uh, sections to read. And I like to, I like to keep my Bible and a notebook handy um, and as part of my, my morning, uh, morning devotional time. And I select whatever the, uh, the passage is for, uh, for that day and read it and make some, make some notes in my notebook as to, uh, as to what, uh, how the scripture may have spoken to me, you know, something that's going on in my life, maybe something that's going on in society in general or whatever. Uh, and then, you know, uh, interesting sometimes to, to go back and look back at some of those uh, later on and uh, you get some, get some real insights. But again, if you're, if you're interested in getting a copy of that, just go to uh, www.lifeway.com, explore the Bible. So again, this week we are, like I said, we are in uh, session six and we'll be looking at uh, the New Testament book of Luke, chapter three, verses seven through 18. So if you would uh, join me in prayer and we will get started. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We thank you for the blessings that you bestow upon us, even in challenging times when we when we think things are going one way and, and, and suddenly they spin a different direction. Father, we, we, we believe and we know that you are with us 100% and that you, you guide, you direct, and, you, and, and you, everything in our lives comes under your control. Father, as we get into your word this week, Thank you for, again for the, uh, the ability to get together online, even if we can't worship together and study together in person. As we get into your word this week, Father, just uh, open our hearts and minds, take away the distractions out of, uh, out of our lives uh, for this, uh, this, this next short time, and uh, be with us as we study your word. For it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. So again, uh, we're looking this week at Luke chapter three, verses seven through 18. And uh, we're going to be covering uh, a, a warning that was brought by, uh, by John the Baptist. And we're going to look at a response and the the, the same warning exists for us just uh, from Scripture. It, it exists in our lives and our, in our daily lives and in our worlds. And then the, the responses that, that come from that warning and then the, the, the division of how things, how things look differently to different, uh, different perspectives. You know, uh, back in, in uh, on January 27th of 1986, um, uh, Bob Ebling and four other colleagues uh, sounded, sounded a note of warning uh, as one of the engineers of the Space Shuttle Challenger. Uh, Ebling and his colleagues came to the conviction that the temperature would lead inside uh, the fuel tanks would lead to an explosion. And those above him ignored the warnings and proceeded with uh, with that ill-fated launch. You know, it's at some point in, in our lives, most of us have, uh, uh, have at one point or another probably ignored warning signs. Uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the gas gauge you know, starts getting low and that little, the little idiot light comes on, the little gas pump pops up and you say, well, you know, I can, I can make it another 10 miles. And, and uh, you know, eight miles later, you find out why that light was there. Um, you know, you may, uh, you may have at some point in time seen the sign that's, uh, that's in the, in, in the, the, the picture over here, uh, from the, uh, from this week's lesson, the danger, thin ice, keep off and, uh, kind of thumbed your nose at it and said, oh, you know, that's the, that, that sign's there. It's a warning for other people. It's not for me. Uh, nothing, nothing could possibly happen to me. And, uh, uh, you venture out and, and you find out that, that uh, 
that the sign should have said extreme danger, extremely thin ice, keep off or else. <laughs> because, you know, sometimes it takes that, that stern of a warning. And, and even then, sometimes that, even that stern of a warning uh, doesn't lead to us, to us heeding it. Um, you know, there's, uh, th there's a lot of warning signs in our lives. And, uh, you know, you get, uh, you get, you get notifications, uh, that, uh, uh, you know, that, 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 that something is, is, is coming due. You get a bill and it's kind of a warning that says, Hey, you know, you, you owe this money. This is, this is going to, the, the, you owe this, uh, you owe this in, in two weeks. And, uh, again, it's a, it's a warning sign. And we, those kind of warnings, we tend to heed, but warnings that we see very often, um, uh, out of the Bible, sometimes we, we tend not to listen to. Yeah, and sometimes, again, and sometimes warning signs are, are uh, clearer than others. Sometimes they're, they're, they're kind of in your face obvious, but other times they're, they're a little bit more subtle. And what we're going to see coming out of John the Baptist here shortly was uh, was very clear, very much in your face kind of a warning. Now, John the Baptist uh, he appeared uh, in the infancy narratives uh, as the uh, the the son of Zechariah and Elizabeth, uh, being Elizabeth being uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Elizabeth being uh, Mary's cousin or relative. Uh, most scholars say that that, that she was a, a cousin, um, maybe a couple of a uh, couple of levels removed. But they they were you know they did know each other. And uh, the news of the uh, the miraculous birth that was uh, that was on the way uh, to the barren parents first came to Zechariah uh, while he was serving in the temple. And the angel came, and we we talked about this a few weeks ago. That uh, you know the angel came to uh, to Zechariah and told him him what was getting ready to happen and 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 he doubted he said well how am i supposed to believe this and the angel said fine you want you want a sign and he made him the angel made him mute for uh, uh for nine months until <laughs> until uh after john the baptist was born and uh, at that point then we see later that uh you know, as as we neared the time of uh, of John the Baptist, uh, uh, and uh, said so that uh, that once he was born, uh, that uh, uh, the the infancy story of John the Baptist kind of stops uh, in uh, uh, Luke uh, chapter one verse eighty. He says that uh, the child grew up. And became spiritually strong, and he was in the wilderness until the day of his public appearance to Israel. In other words, it was that well, yeah, nothing, nothing really big happened. Uh, you know, there, 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 there's a lot of conjecture around uh, what could have happened in John the Baptist's uh, childhood. Uh, there's, uh, there's uh, assumptions and presumptions uh, that. Uh, uh, you know, being Jesus's uh, earthly cousin, um, that that they may have uh, interacted at, at that time. But there again, there's there's no uh, uh, there's no real evidence to that effect. And uh, uh, in fact, later as we see uh, Jesus approaching John the Baptist uh, uh, to be baptized, uh, there's there's not a sense. Uh, the, that they were close cousins. Uh, there was, uh, there was that, you know, I know who you are because, uh, the, you know, the Holy Spirit and John the Baptist knew who Jesus was, you know, because it, it was revealed to him that way, just as, uh, just as it was revealed in Elizabeth's womb. When Mary came to visit the, uh, the babe, uh, John the Baptist, uh, uh leapt in Elizabeth's womb at the presence of, of the Messiah. And, uh, but there's, so there's not, there, there's no detail anywhere, even in, uh, non-scriptural, uh, materials, uh, uh, 
uh, you know, the just the uh, the historical and, and uh, traditional uh, uh, stories. There's nothing. There, there's not really nothing that, that that says anything about how John the Baptist grew up, and and uh, uh, but there is some conjecture that uh, since uh, since after all his parents, Zechariah and Elizabeth, <clears throat> were up there in years. There's possibility that uh, that, that that they didn't live long into uh, into his youth, but we know that somehow, for some reason, John the Baptist, the John, this the the child, ended up living in the wilderness, and uh, uh, he uh, as as we find in uh, in. in as we're kind of reintroduced to him, um, we see that, uh, that, that that he lived. He lived. He was in out in the wilderness, and he lived on. I get this, locusts and wild honey. So he was. It was. He, he was. He was finding honeycomb, natural, uh, you know, beehives, and natural honeycomb, uh, and and eating locusts. Well, you know, bugs. Uh, they, they they say that there's a lot of protein there, you know, and they're 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 crunchy, I suppose, but uh, it's kind of kind of odd. And wearing wearing uh, camel hair, you know, it's a, a very scratchy, you know, kind of kind of uh, you know, tunic or clothes made out of woven camel hair, uh, very uh, so kind of like burlap. And uh, so what we see is that. Uh, uh, John was somewhat of a freak show. <laughs> uh, I mean, come on, do you think about it? The, the uh, he's uh, he's he's kind of the, the a wild man. Um, and it kind of brings to mind for me having uh, you know having grown up um, uh, in in the sixties and seventies. Uh, uh, it brings to mind some of the. Uh, uh, so some of the, uh, the the wild and crazy hippie preachers uh, in, uh, of the Jesus movement from back in the seventies. You know, they kind of uh, they, they, they kind of had that had that wild and crazy look about them, and uh, but John uh, he basically existed in the in the realm. <clears throat> Uh, between Jerusalem and, and the Dead Sea, where where prophets like Elijah and, and Amos had experienced the power of God, and so we're 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 being we're being brought back now to John the Baptist. Um, you know, he was an outcast. He was uh, he was very very foreign. Even though his his father had been a priest, uh, he obviously hadn't. Followed in uh, in his father's footsteps into the priesthood, um, so yeah, he he was out there, and obviously he was he was learning, and and as uh, again as as, uh, uh, as Elijah and, and, and Amos and and uh, even Isaac and Malachi to to some degree they had uh, they they had gone off into the desert. Uh, to in the wilderness to learn and and learn and, and learn through this through the Holy Spirit, and now we're coming back around to Him. So as we as we go ahead and get started into our into our lesson this morning, <coughs> uh, we'll <clears throat> looking at Luke chapter three verses seven through nine. He then said to the crowds who came out to be baptized by him, brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Therefore, produce fruit consistent with repentance, and don't start saying to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father, for I tell you that God is able to raise up children for Abraham from these stones. The ax is already at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that doesn't produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. So let's let's dig into this now. So, you know, John the Baptist, um, 
Yeah, again, he, his life was kind of quiet since back in uh, chapter 1, verse 80. Um, and but, but we do know that he had continued to grow in, in, uh, both in his faith and in his, in his strength. And people had heard about him. You know, they, 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 they heard about this wild man out there and, and, and they were coming out to see him and he would preach and, and in this particular instance, uh, uh, crowds, now get this, crowds were coming out to see him and to be baptized by him. So apparently the word had gotten around that, uh, that, that John was out here and, and he was preaching, he was preaching repentance and he was, he was preaching baptism. Now, there's, there's a very important aspect here. Baptism wasn't something that was, that, that was common to the Jews of the day. However, you know, they had their, they had their rites and rituals that, uh, uh, that, 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 uh, that, that, that believers had to go through, uh, to prove that they, if you will, their, uh, their, their, their Jewishness, uh, so to speak. But, uh, Baptism wasn't something that was that, that they themselves did. However, any Gentiles who wanted to convert to Judaism were required to be baptized. It was it was part of their law. In order for you to in order for you to become a Jew, in order for you to follow Judaism, not only do you have to follow the rules and the laws and all of this, but you you have to be baptized. We that are born into it, we, we don't have to be. So there, you know, there was that, that, that double standard, uh, the you know, different strokes of, uh, depending, on, depending on who you were, where you came from, and, and, and what your beliefs were. And but specifically here, John is talking to the Jews who came to see him because they were coming out with the Gentiles that were coming to be baptized. And because they had heard, and get this, they had heard that there was a judgment coming, that the Messiah was on the way. And so he, uh, uh, yeah, the, the, the Gentiles were, were coming out and being baptized, but the Jews were coming out to be baptized as well. And he, he said to him, you brood of vipers, who warned you to, to, to flee the coming wrath? And because what they were doing, they were coming out to be baptized because they were covering their bets. And they were saying, well, maybe, uh, maybe, we, should, maybe we should be baptized so that we're safe. You know, I've heard a lot of I've heard a lot of people say, "Well, you know, maybe I should, maybe I should go to church. Maybe I should be baptized. Just you know, just just in case there is a God." <laughs> That's not how it works. I mean, the, the baptism itself the baptism itself does nothing. Um, but uh, his, so in in John's opening address, he's he's challenging them, and says says therefore produce fruit consistent with repentance because again he was preaching a gospel of baptism for the repentance of sin in other words baptism representing your repentance from from sin so the 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 warning uh, uh it was actually against just letting letting baptism become another outward uh, just, just just an outward rite or ritual whereby you come out here and you get John the Baptist and they, they called him the Baptist not because he was Baptist because he was a Baptist he was baptizing people so uh, it was sometimes uh, I'm, I'm tempted to, to not call him John the Baptist but John the baptizer because because that's what he was he he was a baptist he was a practitioner of baptism and uh, so you know he he approaches them from 
uh, from the, this kind of a wild-eyed, um, straightforward, no-nonsense, uh, uh, what uh, when I was growing up, what we used to refer to as hellfire and brimstone preachers. Yeah, like the preacher man. Uh, and he, he knew, he knew that they were uh, put not too fine of a point. He knew that they were scum and he addressed them as such. He, yeah, vipers, uh, there, there were a lot of, there were a lot of deadly snakes uh, in, in Israel and, uh, the, the, some, some killed instantly, some killed over a period of time. Uh, and, but all were, were deadly. They were, uh, the, and he's referring to them as a brood of vipers. In other words, you're, you're corrupting faith. You're corrupting belief. You're corrupting the reason for faith in God and in the fact that they are requiring uh, the, the adherence to, to man's law, adherence, adherence to man's version of God's law, adherence to rites and rituals that mean nothing because the, the rites and rituals, they're absolutely meaningless. So he challenges them and says, therefore produce fruit consistent with repentance. Because if you repent, what does it mean to repent? Repent means to turn around. You know, you're going this way, you're going this way into sin. You repent, you turn around and go the other way. And they were saying that, well, if we're baptized, then we're safe. John says, no, you need to repent. Baptism isn't, isn't what's going to save you. And we say that, we say that to this day that, uh, you know, that just, just being baptized, um, is, it isn't enough repentance. According to second Chronicles, um, uh, seven fourteen, repentance is a genuine turning from sin toward God. So the, the idea is that not that you get baptized and then you're saved. No, you accept God, you repent of your sins, and then you are baptized as a symbol of your repentance. But another, other symbols of repentance are seen in how we act. And how we treat others and how we behave, um, and then he says, uh, you, know, uh, "You know, we don't don't say to yourselves, we have Abram as our father, for I tell you that God is able to raise up children for Abraham from these stones." In other words, God's all powerful. If if God if God just wanted if God just wanted wanted descendants for Abraham, he could he could turn these turn these rocks on the ground into descendants of Abraham. The, the, the descendants of Abraham gets you nothing. Uh, because you're born into uh, into a certain faith, uh, gets you nothing. You're you may be you may be born uh, you know you may you may be born Baptist, you may be born Muslim, you may be born Catholic. It because this is what you're born into, gets you zero, absolutely nothing. And that's what that's what John was uh, was was hammering on here is that. Uh, that that your heritage, while it may be it may be interesting, God doesn't care. Your heritage isn't going to save you, and it was it was true the same then as it is today. Baptism in itself is not what saves you. It is it's a symbol. <clears throat> and yet, <laughs> you know, uh, the, 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 the ones that were hearing this, obviously to them, what John was saying was heresy because they, you know, they, people don't like being told that 
something that they have believed their whole lives, that their, that, that their families have believed for their whole lives, is a lie. And, I, and not, just, not just, well, that's not quite, no, it's, it's an out and out lie. And you know, we uh, I recently uh, saw something on Facebook, you know, about uh, you know uh, uh, that a friend of mine posted about uh, old time uh, 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 hellfire and brimstone preacher, and and I, I I remarked I remarked that we need more more of those today. You know, it's a, it's a sad state of affairs that we that, that we've lost those that we've got so many mamby pamby. Uh, Feel good, live your best life now. Uh, uh, so many, uh, so, so many of the, the these these softy softy preachers. It's about time we got back to the the the, the John uh, John the Baptizer version of of repent or you're going to hell. You die and you're unrepentant and you are unsaved. You are going to burn in hell. And as and that's where that's where John goes next. He says the axe is already at the root of the tree. Therefore, every tree that doesn't produce fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. You know he's he, he's using a, a metaphor that uh, uh, that uh, uh, it was used in the Old Testament repeatedly. Uh, Isaiah used it uh, regarding. Uh, got the imagery for, for God's judgment of Assyria. Ezekiel used it uh, uh, for the imagery of uh, used the imagery of cutting down trees to describe God's judgment on the nations as, as that was coming. Daniel narrowed down the vision of the king down to uh, to, to to King Nebuchadnezzar as 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 the axe is being laid at the root of your tree. So so here John is is bringing that same that same root reference and axe reference and not just cutting down the tree, but the axe is being laid at the root of the tree, the, the root of the problem, that belief that because you can trace your ancestry and there's, there's a, there's a, uh, there, there's a, uh, I won't even call it a denomination because it's more of a demon nomination uh, there, out there that, uh, that, that, that believes that if you can trace your ancestry back to the cross or back to whoever, that that means you're one of the, you're one of the elect. You're one of the, you're going to be saved. And it's not true. It's, it, is a, it is an out and out lie. And those in charge of that religion, they are going to burn in hell too. And there's probably, there's probably a special place in hell for those, for, for those who deliberately distract and, 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 and misguide the followers. There's probably a special place in hell for them, but you know we don't know that. That's not scriptural. I'm I'm, I'm getting off into my into my ranting. And I'm sorry, but but it's true. It's it's absolutely true. And here, but here he's he's telling that 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 all of this. If you don't produce fruit, you know, Jesus referred to himself as the true vine, and that. Uh, that 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 uh, that if if you if you are saved, if you are truly saved, you're going to produce fruit. And salvation isn't about I did this or I did that, so I'm saved. I did this. No, it's I. The the only I did there is is I accepted Christ. <clears throat> yeah. So. You know, a lot of times, you know, people but pe people rely on on religious works, uh, to and they, they they trust that to to save them and, and instead of instead of faith in Christ, um, you know, to some it's attendance. Well, I've been going to this church. 
for 56 years. I started here when I was three years old. And I've sat in this same place, in this same pew for all those 56 years. Have you ever accepted Christ? Or, oh, I go to confession, I go to confession nine times a week. Have you ever accepted Christ? Oh, I'm, I'm, at, I'm at church and on all of the, on all of the holidays and I, and, I, and I partake of communion. Have you ever accepted Christ? Well, when I was 11, I was baptized. Have you ever accepted Christ? Does your life reflect that you've accepted Christ. That's the that that's the one that's that's the ouch point here. That's the ouch point. So as we move on, <clears throat> let's take a look at the responses that John gets uh, in Luke chapter three verses ten to fourteen. Starting in in in, uh, in verse ten, it says, "What." What then should we do? The crowds were asking him. And he replied to them, The one who has two shirts must share with someone who has none. And the one who has food must do the same. Tax collectors also came to be baptized. And they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? And he told them, Don't collect any more than what you have been authorized. And some soldiers also, also questioned him and said, what should we do? And he said to them, don't take money from anyone by force or false accusation and be satisfied with your wage. <laughs> so he's, he's, just, he's just nailed them about do about it's not who you say you are or what you say you do, but it's about repentance. And what do they do? It's what, it's what we tend to do because we don't want to hear the truth. We don't want, we don't want it. We throw it out. We figure out a way, we figure out a way of twisting it and turning it because, and, and they did too. So it says, well, well then what should we do? Folks, I just told you, it's not, a, it's not about do to get saved. It's about get saved and you will automatically do. But what do they say? Well, what should we do? And he says, fine. Okay, I'll tell you what. You want to you want to know what you're gonna, what you should do, and he he's actually spinning this off as as a, an, actually an appropriate answer to the question. It's what does you know they wanted to know what should we do, and he's he's going to tell them this is what repentance should look like, because Jews at the time were exceptionally, um, I'll say, um, hoarding, this is mine. And they, and, you know, and they had, they, they, they lived a hard life. And, and so, so it, it, it was hard. And a lot of them, a lot of them only had a couple of sets of clothes. And so the idea of giving up half of your clothes to somebody that, that doesn't have anything. It was a, that, that was a tough call. And they, it wasn't something that they were just going to readily do. But what he, was, what he was giving them was, this is what repentance, this is what acceptance, this is what faith generates, is the ability and the willingness and the heart to do this. So he says, 
The one that has two shirts must share with someone who has none, and the one who has food must do the same. In other words, be generous. And we, we look at it the same way today as uh, being generous. And yeah, there's a lot of generous people in the world that someday are going to burn in hell because it's not about being generous. On the other hand, there are a lot of saved people who are, they're saved, but their faith isn't all that strong and they really don't, and they're not all that generous. Uh, and and we're not gonna, while we're not going to pursue it, yes, I know some people will say that, uh, that, that uh, you know, if you're not bearing fruit, then you're not saved. It's like, mm, okay, yeah. They may be bearing they may be bearing some fruit, but maybe not as much as they should or could. But at the same time, they are they are bearing, and and there is there is repentance without being outwardly or in your face. Um, but there is that there is salvation there, and there is repentance. So here we have the. the uh, uh, the tax collectors, the, the second, second level of, of questioning, and this is a little bit more detailed. In the, the, first the crowds in general, and now we have tax collectors, came, in, came to be baptized and they said, well, what should we do? Now there's something you gotta know about tax collectors. <clears throat> yeah, tax collectors were the same 2,000 years ago as they are now. They, they have a very bad reputation, uh, but even more so probably back then because uh, the reputation that tax collectors had was that uh, Rome required X amount of taxes and the tax collectors, while they were paid by Rome to collect taxes, they would tack on ancillary fees and surcharges and service fees and you know three percent for this two percent i was look i was looking at a power bill the other day and it's like okay well here's 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 the amount that we're charging you for your electricity and then there's this and this and this and service fee and well here's another kind of service fee and then there's this and then there's this tax and that tax and that tax and, and it's like 40 percent additional like really i don't want to pay all this but the tax collectors that that's how the tax collectors looked at it it's like okay rome says you owe three percent and so then there's a uh, there, there's a there, there's a one percent service charge. There's a two percent uh, handling fee. There's a there, there's a one percent um, there, there's a one percent uh, returning your money to Rome fee. There there's the there's the the bag fee for the bag that I keep the coins in. Um, you know, ne next thing you know, you know the the tax the, the tax is ten percent. The tax collector is actually making more money than Rome. And so they, they had such a bad reputation of doing this and they were considered so dishonest that, that in a court of law, the testimony of a tax collector was not allowed because they, they you know, it's kind of like that, kind of like that old joke uh, about politicians. If their if their lips are moving, they're lying, and I mean that's that's the view that that that, uh, that that people had of the tax collectors. So the tax collectors and said came and said, "Well, what should we do?" And John was quick to answer, "Don't collect any more than than what you've been authorized." In other words, quit being dishonest, turn away from your sin, repent of your sin. Repent of your uh, of of your of your your actions, and and the thing is, if you have a relationship with God, this is going to be the fruit that is shown. That you know, just because you 
okay, well, I'm going to be a good person and I'm not going to. No. Accept Christ. Accept salvation. And at this point in time, repent of your sins. And the evidence of repentance is you don't collect any more taxes than what you're authorized. And then along, then comes the soldiers. The soldiers ask the same question. Well, what should we do? Okay, these were these were probably these were probably Jewish soldiers, uh, either uh, hired or conscripted, uh, uh, but employed by by Herod Antipas, um, <coughs> possibly to guard the the the, uh, the tax collectors, because you know tax collectors a lot of people. A lot of people probably wanted to wanted to do away with them, so you know, the, but the guards were there, and and uh, and they were kind of strong arm guys. Again, they were you know uh, they 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 were they were paid, but they would they uh, you know they were the old time uh, you know the, the old the old uh, the old time gangster movies you know the uh, uh, you know the collection the collecting. Uh, uh, Collecting uh, protection fees, you know, they had a protection racket going. Um, it says, "Don't take money from anybody by force or by false accusation. Be satisfied with your wages. In other words, be humble. Accept, accept what you are given. And again, it's not about do. It's it's not about." It, 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 it's not about, about what you do. It's about who you are. Uh, I've, I've said it, I've said it often, uh, and I, I use this uh, in, in, in sermons every once in a while. Um, it's not about the do, it's about the who. It's not about what you do, but it's about being who God wants you to be. And when you are who God wants you to be, that becomes evident by your actions. So our, our last section of scripture here, um, looking at verses 15 through 18, looking at, at kind of uh, how, how, how things were divided up. And now the people were, were waiting expectantly <laughs> And all of them were questioning in their hearts whether John might be the Messiah. And because of what he was preaching and what he was teaching, uh, they were expecting a Messiah. And John answered to them, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I am is coming. I'm not worthy to untie the strap of his sandal. And he'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing shovel is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with fire that never goes out. Then along with many other exhortations, he proclaimed good news to the people. So what we've got here, Israel had been expecting Messiah based on you know, on Old Testament prophecy. And uh, the, the prophes prophecy uh, between the Old Testament and New Testament, there, there's like a 400 year gap where we have no documentation uh, of any kind in scripture of, of, of prophetic, of the word from God. And so there was this, this big gap in there and that people were were waiting so expectantly because they had they were they were under they, they were under the rule of from rome they were under rome's thumb and uh in in israel's history if you look at the at the old testament uh they they had uh they, they had what was known as judges God would provide them. They they would they would fall away. They would end up uh, as slaves. They would end up under somebody else's rule. And God would send what was referred to as a judge, 
and this person was uh, was usually a very very powerful individual, very uh, very forceful, very charismatic individual, and they would lead them often by force. Uh, they they would lead Israel to uh, to overthrow or to to escape their their captors, and so Israel's waiting for an, for another one of these. And they knew that Messiah was coming. The Savior was coming. They, they saw the expectation was that this person would be a, uh, uh, a, a military religious leader. And that, because that's what they were used to. And so they started talking about, well, is maybe, this, maybe this is the guy. And John says, now, wait a minute. <laughs> no. It's not me. I'm the one, as, as, as we, we, we see the quote uh, from Isaiah, that he is the one, uh, the, that he's the one crying in the wilderness. And that, that there's one coming. You know, he's basically, he's there to point the way. He's there to set the stage for, for the Messiah to come. And that, that the Messiah that's coming, uh, you know, I baptize you with water. In other words, I, I dunk you. And, and that's, that's all you're going to get from me. <laughs> you're going to get some preaching and some dunking, and that's it. <coughs> but the one that's coming will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In other words, the one who is coming, the true Messiah, the Son of God, will, will baptize you not by immersion, not by sprinkling or whatever, because that's not, that's, that's a symbol. That's not what does it. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. That's where change is driven and with fire. Now there's a couple of different, uh, different approaches to, uh, to, to what this, the, the fire is, it means, uh, one uh, one school of thought says uh, says that fire is means means uh, um, uh, fervency or an urgency or um, the uh, just that uh, uh, that that passion that you know we we hear uh, we we hear a lot of times about fiery passion and fiery you know again fire and brimstone preacher <laughs> uh, he was you know, very excited very passionate about the preaching. <clears throat> The other school of thought here is that it's referring to he'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit for those who accept and with fire for those who don't. And which is, uh, there, there's some credence lent to that in that the, the verses 17 and 18. Uh, the winnowing shovel, um, think of it this way. It's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's somewhere between a coal shovel, and I know some of you younger ones may not know what a coal shovel is, but it, it's a shovel. It's kind of a square shovel. But I can't think snow shovel. You know, some of you probably, unless you're way down south and you've never seen snow, and then in which case you, know, you may not even know what that is. But it's a broad-bladed shovel. Uh, it's somewhere between that and a pitchfork you know, that you use to, to, to throw hay. Um, and... Uh, uh, but it's 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 like a it's, it's somewhere it ah there you go it's it's a big spork <laughs> okay <laughs> but but the, the grooves the tines go uh, go a little bit further down through it so and what it's used for they would they would bring the uh, they would bring the uh, bring the, the the wheat in and uh, the, the threshing floor was kind of a hard packed surface uh, and uh, in, in a barn or outside of a barn. And they would, they, they would scoop that up and they kind of toss it up in the air. And by shaking it and tossing it, the, uh, the grain, the good grain would fall through the tines, the chaff or the hulls uh, of the grain uh, the, the, the dust, the little bits would get carried away on the wind. So he says his winnowing shovels in his hand to clear the threshing floor. In other words, we are, we're the threshing floor and, and he's, he's coming and he's going to, and he's going to separate out the, as we see in other scripture, uh, the chaff from the wheat. And 
the chaff here recedes as he's going to gather the wheat into the barn. The chaff is going to burn with fire. That's what we see in, in the book of Revelation, uh, speaking about the, uh, the, the lake of fire. It's, it's that chaff that uh, the unrepentant, the, the unsaved, uh, that, that's that burning in hell. Sorry, folks, if you're, if you're sensitive and you're easily triggered, you probably aren't. In, you probably aren't. Well, if you're sensitive and triggered, you're probably, you probably haven't listened to any of these, any of these uh, lessons for, for a couple of months now anyway. <laughs> but, it's, but it's the truth. And, and I, 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 don't, I don't mean to make light of it, but it, it, it's true because it is. The, the unrepentant are, are destined for hell. And it says that, that, uh, that they'll be burned with the fire that never goes out. And then it says that along with that and many other exhortations, he pro- proclaimed the good news to the people. The good news being, you know, that's where we get the name, the word gospel is the good news. The good news that he was preaching was the good news of the coming of Messiah, of the true Messiah. So wrapping up, let's let, let's uh, you know let's take take a look for a second at, at how how do we need to apply this? Well, first of all, judgment awaits those who live in disobedience to God and His standard. And it thing is, what we need to remember is, and and we've studied this uh, uh, we've studied this uh, over the summer uh, last year and, and into the end of the fall. Uh, about disobedience and standards and Jewish law, and and we find this in in Paul's writings that they were expected to obey all of the law and not well okay well I do this and this and this and this and that's so good at this one that one. To, to, to legalists, that one was enough to send you to hell. You had to obey all of the points of the law. And so, and according to that, and, and we know that we are disobedient by nature, but we can change. We can turn. And we can obey God and his standards but only by the Holy Spirit within us. Secondly, repentance is demonstrated through godly living. In other words, you know, repentance isn't gained through godly living. It's demonstrated. So the, 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 you, you, you got to repent. <laughs> you, you gotta, you know, if you believe that, that, that being a good person is going to get you saved, you need to repent, you need to change, you need to turn and say no. Salvation leads to godly living. And lastly, one's eternal destiny is determined by his or her response to Jesus and whether or not we accept. So this week, the, uh, the memory verse is uh, from Luke 3, 22. And the Holy Spirit descended on him in a physical appearance like a dove, and a voice came from heaven. You are my, be- my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. And this goes a little bit, uh, a little bit outside of this week's lesson uh, by a few verses to when Jesus steps out of the crowd and John the Baptist says, here, here he is, and and Jesus has to be to be baptized. So, and and at that point, the Holy Spirit descended upon upon him uh, with physical appearance like a dove, and a voice came from heaven: "You are my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased." Heavenly Father, we thank you. We feel so blessed. Father, we, we thank you for John the Baptist. Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, and we thank you for your plan of salvation. Lord, just let us, let us come to you. Let us come to you in, in honesty and in faith and in purity. 
and let us repent. Let us accept Jesus Christ. Let us accept the Holy Spirit. Let us accept the change and the repentance that we need so badly in our lives. Father, let us turn back to you as a nation, as things are, are so chaotic right now. Let us just return to you and accept, accept the salvation of Messiah and the infilling of the Holy Spirit. For it's in your Son's name we pray. Amen.